start with our first question, if you wish. Okay. Uh, your speech will be about the power of simplicity. And uh, do you think are, we are uh, globally on the same page when we uh, say simplicity? Uh, you know, I think um, simplicity is definitely a trend, and you could talk about where it started and how it started. I think, I think Apple played a, a big role in it because its products became so successful and its web design and all that kind of stuff, and people responded to it so well. And I, I think that was one of the catalysts. But I do think all around the world... Uh, we are seeing products and, uh, you know, design has become so much more important. And design actually uh, becomes more important than just products. I think you can look at companies as, as examples of design and how, how beautifully the processes, you know, mesh to create something wonderful at the end. And I think, hopefully, I, I do believe it is a worldwide trend, um, but... There's an awful lot of room for people to, you know, compete better by, by harnessing the power of simplicity because human beings tend to make things more complicated. So I think the, the simpler solutions always win in the end. Actually, the way we interact with systems is constantly evolving and uh, systems provide us uh, more features every day and uh, the users also demand for new features uh, as the time passes by. Uh, however, uh, the more features a system provides to the user, the uh, more difficult it gets it to keep it simple. Very true. Uh, do you think the way we perceive simplicity will change in the future? I think it is true that things become more complicated over time. That's one of the challenges. I think um, philosophically there is a difference. And I hate to always sound like, a, like an Apple fanboy, but... They have done things right in the past, and they've made mistakes as well. But I think philosophically, there's um, a design question about how much stuff you can put into a product before it becomes too confusing to a user. Um, so I think I think Apple has done historically a very good job of, of keeping things simple enough so people could not get confused by the things they don't need. Um, I think Samsung has, for the most part, had more features in their phones, for example, um, and a lot of people do like that, um, but it does make it a little bit more difficult to, you know, to use the things you want to use every day. So there's always that, that balance. The good news is that I think, I think civilization sort of advances, you know, as one big unit around the world. Um, And what, what we think is simple today might have been more complicated back, uh, in a manner of speaking, you know, 10, 20 years ago. So I think there is room, as we all become more sophisticated, for things to get a little bit more feature-rich without confusing us. Uh, but you got to be smart about that. You, you know, we are all getting smarter and better at using uh, our technology but you can't push people too hard or you lose them. So that's the challenge, I think, to a company like Apple or Samsung or, or any technology company is like, how useful can you make your device? What wonderful things can it, can it do without confusing people to the point where they don't want to use it at all? So it, it, it takes some real understanding of, of what human beings really want and need and how to present it to them. Uh, how was uh, working with Steve Jobs? You know, people ask me what it was like to work with Steve quite often. And, um, you know, it, because it's, it's becoming, uh, you know, a more distant memory with every passing year, um, I think you tend to, to glorify the, you know, the memory. So, um, but I never thought he was as uh, brutal as some people make him out to be. You know, the... The more famous stories are, are his temper tantrums and he could be mean to people and, you know, those negative things. The biography uh, cast him, I thought, in too negative a light, as did many people who worked with him. The truth, I think, is somewhere in between, um, you know, the image of Steve uh, and, and the idea of Steve as a nice guy, because <laughs> he wasn't nice in the, that classic definition of the word. 
but he had a lot more um, humanity to him than uh, a lot of people believe. He was charismatic, he had this great vision of, of the future, uh, and he had a great sense of humor. We had a lot of fun working together, and I, I've never seen that in any of the movies or, or books. Um, and he really cared very deeply about his family um, and, and the employees of Apple, who he thought of as family. So he, he was a real human being, but he was uncompromising in, in you know, the progress we had to make every day. And he was, he pushed and pushed um, to the point where people would produce uh, better things than they thought themselves capable of. You know, I've heard that from a number of people. And I think that was true for me. He, we created advertising, and, and sometimes he didn't like what we started with, even though we loved it. And then he would push us and push us, and we'd end up <clears throat> putting something on television that ended up being better than the first thing we showed him. And I thought, you know, that's pretty good that he had that, that talent. You know, while you're in the middle of the process, it isn't terribly pleasant <laughs> to be pushed and to have the, you know, the, the debates and arguments and that kind of a thing. But you can stand back and look at what you've created when it was over um, and think that was really, really good. Steve knew what he was doing and he did that not just with the advertising people, obviously, but with the product people, the designers and engineers. He was always pushing them to do better. So there was a lot of pressure working with Steve, um, but those who could, who could successfully meet you know, uh, that pressure, perform under that pressure, um, ended up having very, very good careers because of it. Let's move on with a changing trend in the, the uh, systems and uh, user behaviors. We are moving towards the uh, AI and screenless experiences. Uh, how do you think we can uh, make such complexity simple for the user? Well, I think, you know, we get, I, I'm not a, uh, an inventor myself. I'm not, you know, an innovator of technology. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of, of advertising. <laughs> and. So I do have to draw that line because I have to say all the times that Apple would come up with new things for me to help advertise, um, I would sometimes scratch my head and say, hmm, I never thought of that. You know? And I realized that that's why that wasn't my job and advertising was. So it's a little hard for me to talk about like future technologies, AI and that kind of a thing um, because I don't you know, totally understand it myself. Um, I mean, I, I see the demos and I think, you know, oh, that's cool, and I'm not exactly sure how it applies to real life. Um, but I think that the, the principle that guides all new technology remains the same, and that is to put yourself um, in the customer's shoes, basically. It's, it's very old advice, and I think um, when I look at Steve Jobs and how he succeeded, I believe that's what he did. He was very, very good at looking at everything Apple did from the customer's point of view. Um, and he knew that uh, people wouldn't look at things Apple did and say, oh, well, I get what they're trying to do, and I guess they couldn't go all the way for this reason or that reason. You know, people aren't that understanding. Either something works or it doesn't work. Um, so they don't care about all your issues, about how hard, hard it is to do. Um, so that's my feeling about um, AI and these future technologies that we need to, you know, wherever that goes, it has to go someplace where an ordinary person, you know, would see it and, and sort of lust after it, like, wow, I, I really need that in my life. And it's, it's easy to use and it enhances your life uh, or your work or your fun or whatever in, in meaningful ways, but it's second nature. You know, people can't work too hard. I don't mean that people are lazy by nature, I just mean that people respond to simplicity. Uh, when something just you know, immediately clicks in their head, um, they gravitate towards that, and the company that provides that experience that makes it that simple earns the, the trust and the love of customers who, who, you know, who have the experience. And I think, again, to use Apple as an example, a company that does that time after time sort of creates that emotional bond because they really understand what a customer wants. That's how you build loyalty over time and, and your new products become that much easier to sell. Um, do you think there's a connection between simplicity and sustainability? Between simplicity and sustainability, is that? 
Do you think uh, simplicity makes uh, companies, brands and products more sustainable? And what do you think about that? Now that is an interesting question. Um, it's one I haven't heard before. Um, I think I, I think simplicity has so many different ways of making a company better um, that you know it, it can be applied in, in many different areas. Um, it's not just a product thing. It's it's the way you advertise. It's the way you support customers. It's it's the way you structure the company. It's so many different things that simplicity is. Uh, creates a better environment for employees and for customers because it it allows them to focus on on something and and people need that kind of focus to move forward effectively. So, as far as sustainability goes, um, I think you know when uh, that simplicity has a role to play there because you know sustainability as a focus for a company when 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 the process is in place and the and the kinds of products that you deliver. Are, are mindful of, of sustainability requirements. Um, I just think it, it, it makes everything make more sense, put it that way. Um, it's such an obvious thing. I mean, my, my, it's kind of a problem when I try to talk about simplicity because I think most companies don't pay attention to it simply because it's so obvious. Of course people like things to be simpler, but because it's so obvious, I think a lot of companies don't make it a focus. So I think when I think great leaders understand the power of simplicity to affect the kind of change that they want to affect. So sustainability is just one other area where I think um, the feeling of simplicity and focus you know, can only help. From where you see our future, uh, what would be uh, the one thing that you would suggest to um, young professionals who aim to um, create change, actually, uh, in the fields of design, software, and technology? It's almost hard to pick one thing to suggest, um, but I have, I have a few big ones. <laughs> and, and one is um, the, the, the desire to create love in the customer. We mentioned that in an earlier answer, but when when an experience is is delightful for a customer that is when they share it with their friends and their family and their co-workers and things like that if you have an okay experience with a company you your interaction is complete and you don't really talk about it um, and i understand that different companies you know make different things that some people you know uh, will never love a product in, with some companies as they would love like a shiny new iPhone that's easy to fall in love with. Um, I talked to like a telecom company and it, it's, it's kind of hard to be loved on that same level but you can still you know in its own way every company can create a, that kind of bond with a customer um, by providing a, 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 a very simple experience uh, a very effective experience so to me, the goal is always, you know, what is your company going to do that, that will literally make people talk to their friends about it? You know, is it, is it, you know, the customer experience is so important. And I always got the sense from Steve Jobs that that was his, his ultimate goal. It was making that experience so good that people would be attracted to it. They would recruit people themselves. Um, and they would become more and more bonded with Apple with every new product. So um, it's a tough thing to do, um, but any company that can create that emotional connection with a customer um, it can only get you know better and better as time goes by. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it was such a, a pleasure to. It's meet my you. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>